Shalom, it's your brother Baram, and I'd like to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rekha Kradash, and double honors to the apostles, the elders, and the beloved brothers of Great Millstone. And the water to you brothers who have used this thumbnail in your videos. And why do I say that? Because it brought this dream that I had approximately about a year and a half to two years ago to the forefront of my mind. And let me say this before I delve into this video, brothers. I'm just a brother that's working out his salvation with fear and trembling, just like I would hope that you are. And it goes to show you it's all spiritual, brothers, because when I started to look for material to put together to bring this dream into fruition, I came across this channel here. And as it states, the biggest gangster who made others look small, OG Muscle Craig Monster. And I want you to pay attention to this video for two reasons. Number one, if you look right beside where it states subscribers, what do we see? 144 million. But we who are of the hopeful elect, who hope to be the select of the elect, we hope to be 144,000 men who are going to be the governing body of the kingdom of heaven. Remember, Yahweh Shai stated, those who followed me will sit on 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. I'm going to reference this video momentarily, but let me get back to this photo here and bear with me brothers because I'm going to try to describe this dream in as many details as I can recall. So when the dream starts, um, for whatever reason, the Lord didn't allow me to see, but uh, in the dream, my eyes are closed and I feel someone putting something on my head. It's very similar to, I grew up in the Midwest and it's similar to a very cold winters in Chicago. It's similar to your parent putting your skull cap on your head before you leave the house. It fit my head perfectly, right? So when I open my eyes, the Lord didn't allow me to see clearly. The, um, my vision was similar to when you get out of the shower and there's a, there's a fog over the mirror. You can see, but you just can't see it uh, distinctively, right? Uh, but what I could see and discern immediately is that I had a crown on my head. And something else that I knew immediately was I was in a completely different body. Brothers, when I tell you I had the same spirit, but it was in a completely different body. And brothers, when I, uh, I can't overemphasize this enough. I was in complete awe in how I looked. The reason I referenced this bodybuilder here a moment ago is because my body that I had in that dream, it had to be six, five, six or seven times the size of his. When I tell you it was bodybuilder-esque, but it looked even better, right? Uh, something else I knew immediately is that I was taller. I had to be maybe seven feet tall. Um, I knew I had a garment on down to the foot. Was it white? Yes, but it had details in it, but I couldn't see them uh, clearly. But Yahweh Shai, he was taller than me. Something else um, that stands out that I can remember in this dream is just the circumference of my neck, the diameter. Um, I knew that the dimensions of my body were far more superior because if my neck was that wide and that thick, I knew all my body had to be extremely muscular and mass massive. Uh, I remember having an afro, I remember having a beard, but I, again, I couldn't see my eyes or the complexion of my skin uh, definitively. Um, let, me, let me come out of this, brothers, because when I thought about this dream, certain precepts came to mind immediately. When the Apostle Paul stated in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 24, for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I am known. Like the Lord showed me this dream dimly, but I pray and I'm hoping, and I pray for you brothers too as well, that we are all part of the elect who are going to be crowned in that crowning ceremony. Let me come out of this, right? Because I'm going to share this with you, brothers, and that's why I got to leave a link in the description to this video. When you listen to this video, the part I want you to listen to is not the strength, not how massive he was, but how the other people marveled when they looked at him. Brothers, when I looked at myself in that video, I'm sorry, in that dream, I, I was marveling at how I looked. I could not believe that it was me. As the scripture states, eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, all that Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai has to reveal to those that love him. Now let me come back to this and let me go back to what Ezra saw, right? In 2nd Ezra chapter 2, verse 42 through 48. 
I, Ezra, saw an an innumerous crowd on Mount Zion, too many people to count. They were all singing and praising the Lord. Standing in the middle of the crowd was a very tall young man, taller than any of the others. Something I can recall in this dream, I I was young and I knew instinctively Yahweh was young too as well and he was taller than me. He was placing crowns on the heads of each person, but he towered above them all. I was spellbound and the KJB states, he marveled at this sight. Verse 44, I asked the angel, who are those people, sir? He replied, these are the people who have taken off their mortal robes and have put on immortal ones. Remember, the scripture states, when the Lord comes to gather his elect, according to Matthew chapter 24, verse 31, and those elect are only Israelites, according to Isaiah chapter 45, verse 4. Remember, the apostle Paul stated, we are going to be changed in a twinkling of an eye. Boom, immortal bodies, right? They have confessed their faith in Yahweh, and now they are being given crowns and palm branches as a symbol of their victory. Who else had a similar vision to this one? Consider John and John the Revelator, what he saw in in Revelation chapter 7, verse 9 and 10. And it reads, after this, I looked and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our power who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Now let's go back to Ezra and let's pick up where we left off in verse 46. Then I asked the angel, Who is the young man? who is putting crowns on their heads and giving them palms. He is the son of the son of Yahweh. The angel replied, and all the people confessed their faith in him while they lived on the earth. Then I began to praise those who stood for the Lord so bravely. In the KJB it states, he began to praise those who stood so stiffly for the name. And the angel said to me, go and tell my people what you have seen the many marvelous works of the Lord. Brothers, when I tell you something, I marveled and, and, and I was in awe in how I looked. Again, I know I said this before, I couldn't believe how I looked. I couldn't believe. Just like the scripture states, we are going to marvel at the coming of our Lord. We're going to marvel at how we look. Remember, um, 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 the scripture states, When I awake, I shall be like him, for I shall see him as he is. There's another scripture that states, I shall awake in his what? Likeness. Let's go from there to James chapter 1 verse 12. And it reads, Blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let's go from there to Hebrews chapter um, 10 verse 36. You have in need of endurance. Brothers, when I had that dream, or or when I say this, when I saw that thumbnail, it brought back to my remembrance why we shouldn't be enduring. And I hope that's what me revisiting this dream does to you. It fires you up in the spirit. The Lord knows I have no reason to lie to you. I have nothing to gain from lying to you. Let me start over. For you have in need of endurance so that when you have done the will of Yahweh, You will receive what is promised. And what's promised to us, brothers? Immortality, everlasting life. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. Henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me in that day. And not only me, but unto them also that love his appearing. Brothers, the other nations are going to marvel at us. They're they're going to pale in comparison. And not only that, we're going to be immortal. They're still going to be mortal. Remember, Zechariah chapter 14, verses around about 16 through 18, 19. It states that, how do we know they're going to be immortal? How how do we know they're going to be mortal? Because it states that they don't keep our laws, if they don't keep our feast days, if they don't go up to worship, the Lord won't send them any rain, meaning they're going to what? Perish and die. But us, we're going to have a completely different body, brothers. It's going to be otherworldly. Remember, when Yahweh Shai comes, the world is not going to meet him as a man. And we're not going to look like mere men. 
You understand? And I hope that this, this quick lesson, brothers, it fortifies you and it, exalt, it exalts you because we're commanded to exalt one another daily. Shalom.